turn in your Bibles, if you will, to this passage in chapter 6. We'll look at the Lord's Prayer too, but we're really looking at verses 14 and 15. Two weeks ago, I was reading this and studying, and, and this thing of unforgiveness came up and, and uh, just was really heavy on my heart. And then I said, no, I'm not going to preach that. <laughs> you ever tell God, no? I said, I, I don't have peace about preaching it. I, I, I guess I need a fleece like Gideon. Well, about a week later, uh, down at the arena, and we had our first, first horse show. What a great adventure, 160 plus. Many new people we met, and it was a beautiful evening. And I was just really enjoying it and just didn't have a lot on my mind and watching it. And, and uh, so Jimmy did the devotional. So this morning's sermon is Jimmy Thomas's fault. <laughs> so he said, well, turn to your Bibles, First John 1. We're going to read down where it says, confess your sins. If you say you have no sin in us, you're a liar. You must confess your sins and I'm faithful and just to what? Forgive. I said, okay, God, I, I think I hear what you're saying. And then he just hammered on that. And I said, I got it, Jimmy, internally. <laughs> so you were used to push this forward. So if you don't like it, you take it up with Jimmy. But, you know, it's a difficult message because it has a difficult passage. We want to look at this, and, and it doesn't seem duplicate because we just kind of run through it. But we want to look at the context this was in, in verses 14, 15, chapter 6. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Now, if you just read through that, it doesn't have that same significance if you back up and take it in the context. And then we'll look at the meaning of it. You know, we're full of churches now that read the scripture and say, well, the meaning is, I think the meaning is just what it said. And then the cost of unforgiveness. And then simply the gospel and forgiveness. So a couple of weeks ago, this started resonating, and so Jimmy pushed it through, and so I want us to pray, and then we'll begin to look at this. In Jesus' name, we ask, Father, that you just be with us this morning. Again, we have families. Uh, Miss Diane lost a brother, and Miss Carenza lost, uh, lost a dad this week. And Father, we just we pray for those that are hurting, Father. We lift them up. We just ask now that you would bless your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Now look at the context. Now the Sermon on the Mount, chapter 5, was, was beginning and, and uh, Linda and I had the privilege in 08 in March, or, uh, being, or May, being in Israel. And we were up on the Sermon on the Mount and, and I told Linda, get me a picture. And I was, went out there and sat down on the Sermon on the Mount. And I, it was just a good feeling. And then Linda was making a picture and then pointed out a sign that said, stay off the grass. <laughs> so... I'm having this great experience thinking about what Jesus was, and then I'm violating their law, so I scurried off, you know. But in the Lord's Prayer, it, it works through because he's talking about hypocrisy. He's talking about how they prayed in, in the streets. Now, I'm going to tell you I'm so thankful that Mountaintop Cowboy Church is a praying church. When people call us and put in here, you people pray. And I, we unleash the power of God. And that's what this is about today. The power of God being unleashed because we are in the throne room through the blood of Jesus Christ. He's petitioning the Father. What we ask, He petitions the Father. Anything in my name, He said. And we pray up here for the lost. We pray for those that are hurting today. We pray, Father, for uh, the ones that will interreact. Flip was talking about inviting five this week. 300 people times five, 1,500. I didn't know Flip could even do math, but I was impressed. <laughs> you know. But we'll just keep inviting, sharing the gospel. I'm telling you, I love our veterans. As Mel stood up here for our veterans that made it back and, and those that did not, we honor. We've got some old vets. Sorry, Mel. <laughs> but you know, you ask some of those guys to do it and I don't care. They just start 
walking that away. And I thank them for that. Whatever it is in the service of the Lord. Praying. Man, we have that opportunity. So then he works into the Lord's Prayer. And, and you know what it is, but just listen just a minute. Don't recite it in your mind. After this manner, he said, this manner, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That we understand who we're talking to, the supreme being. And as he moves down through there and it says, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Man, we should never miss an opportunity to pray that God has blessed us with that something to eat today, sustaining us spiritually and physically. Then in verse 12, and forgive our, our debts as we forgive our debtors. Have you ever prayed for something like patience? <laughs> How many of you are sorry about that? Because <laughs> the lesson is coming. I was in the worst checkout line at Walmart two weeks ago. And I figured out I was in self <laughs> Just me. Patience. Pray for pay. Now, this is much worse. Go back to verse 12. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Do you want God to forgive you on the level you forgive people? You see, that's what that's saying. Britt and I did not talk about this message, but that song at the end, we'll refer to that quite a bit. The amazing grace that it took to save what? A wretch like me. Well, you're saying this morning, I'm not a wretch. Well, God said you were. There's none righteous. No, not one. We are not good enough. We maybe think we're better than the person across the street, but that's not God, how he measures. He measures us according to his holiness and righteousness and sinlessness. And so we better understand. He said, forgive our debts, our trespasses. He said, I forgive you on the level maybe that you forgive others. You see, are you with me? That's pretty serious, isn't it? We need that forgiveness because we've sinned as we move through this. About a month ago, one of our pastors, Tim and his wife, Brandy Altum and Lifeline, his daughter that had graduated a year before, our youth know her because she was always at camp, was with her boyfriend and he did something that he shouldn't have on driving and another person was killed and his daughter was killed and the young man was in the hospital. 1,500 were at her funeral and the dad preached the service. After the service, he was on the front row leading people to Jesus. In about a week, he left Pleasant Plains and he went to the hospital to sit with that young man to forgive him and pray for him. Forgiveness. That's a load, isn't it? To be able to do that. And he's struggling with what he has to do. But he said the context. Now, we've moved right through it. said, don't pray in the temples and pray in the street or don't give and wave your hand of what I've done. But he said, in the private. And so now he's talking about forgiveness as we come before him. Now let's look at the meaning. Bill Eliff, that's a very prominent pastor in Little Rock at one time, they said, well, Bill, what is the meaning of that passage? He said, what it says. <laughs> look in verse 14 and 15 again. Just read it slowly with me. But if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Isn't that a wonderful promise? But there's a but in the next passage. If you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. What is a trespass? Now, I grew up in a time in, in Equipment, Arkansas. There wasn't much land posted. There wasn't many people said about trespassing. If you were on somebody's land, you knew it. So I really didn't know a lot about that. But then for college money, I was pipelining, and we were off pipelining in a place in Texas, didn't know anybody, and 450 of us gathered up that morning, and the spread boss came out, short hair they called, everybody had a name, I was Arkansas, and he said, now fellas, we're going to go across this ranch, the lady doesn't want us on her property, they fenced down both sides, 
do not step over the fence. If your buckaroo hat blows over, just tell it goodbye and keep moving. I said, boy, this is serious. Trespassing. Stepping where you don't need to be. Now, this is a cowboy church, so we can use this. Have you ever stepped in it? <laughs> God's saying your trespasses, you are stepping where you do not need to be. Transgression comes from trespassing word. We were on that line, and I'm riding down through there, and I'm a grunt. I'm just picking up wood and putting it on a trailer. I have a ball cap that says Arkansas, so I don't have a buckaroo hat. But I looked over and riding down the side of the fence where we're not to trespass, the step where we're supposed to not step, was three people. Two Mexicans and a woman, and all of them had guns across their saddle, and they're counting and looking at us. I said, hmm, this is serious. <laughs> God said... If you forgive those who trespass against you, I'll forgive you. Is this serious? Yes. Then he says, if you don't forgive them, I won't forgive you. It's very serious, isn't it? Trespassing. He said, now look, you don't need to be there. Now this text does not mean, as we've referenced what Brother Jimmy preached down about forgiveness. This is not talking about you have to be saved every day. What it's talking about is your daily life. There's a once, once for all salvation experience where you met God face to face. You humbled yourself. You submitted your life. You said, God's right, I'm wrong. And you invited him to be the boss of your life. You submitted your life. And that's called salvation experience. Now, you're going to have that one time in life. If you've met a righteous, holy God, you're going to know that because the experience is one you'll never forget. And so it's not talking about that experience. What it's talking about is your daily sins. Remember 1 John chapter 1, 6 through 9. Say, so if you say you have no sin in us, you're a liar because we sin daily. We do things that we're not supposed to do. We've been saved from the sin nature, from the death, the guilt, the penalty, and the power. We have a life with the Father in heaven, but we daily sin because our righteousness is not God's righteousness. And we're under the blood of Jesus Christ, but we sin. We do things, we misstep, we, we have human emotions. God created us. So as we do that, Augustine Hippo, uh, what is his last name? Regis. He lived 300 years after Christ. And in that time, they thought the baptism would wash away the sins. Now, baptism washes away dirt. <laughs> if you're not clean. But it doesn't wash away sins. A holy, righteous God through the power of the Holy Spirit cleanses us. We are baptized in the sense to identify, to identify with the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. They thought that so strong back then and he knew that he sinned daily and he had had an experience with Jesus Christ. He was saved, but he waited to be baptized until right before he died so that he'd be clean when he went to heaven. Does that sound silly? He knew that he would sin daily and that if it washed his sins, he would just wait till right before he died and then he'd get baptized and try to maintain sinless in that period of time. <laughs> Sounds silly, doesn't it? But we sometimes do that sort of stuff. The meaning is what it says. We must confess our sins and be forgiven. And he said, I do it on the scale of how you forgive others said, I'm not going to forgive you of those daily sins if you don't forgive others of their daily sins. We know that, don't we? We're a human being. Now remember, God worked this up two or three weeks ago. So he knows who's going to be here. Me for one. This is all just for me. I was reading it just for me. But it's God's word. The meaning, Bill Ellis said, is exactly what it says. If you confess not men, I'll not forgive you if you don't forgive Men, your sins. 
Now, there's always a plus and a minus thing, aren't you? You remember uh, how the plus and minus pulls together? Well, the plus actually is the meaning. We can be forgiven of our sins. That's what it assures us. Isn't that a plus? When we have that advocate with the Father, we know when we've messed up. I used to love Brother Ed Lauderdale's approach at church camp. He always had the nine-year-old boys at Lonsdale. Now, the nine-year-old boys, you know, they're always into stuff, right? And so he always, he said, I want them. Well, every evening he would come in, he'd get them all lined up and get them stripped down just for their underwear to make them take a bath because a nine-year-old boy that plays in the heat all day long, you know, so he gets them down just to their bathing suit or their underwear and makes them run through the shower and get cleansed. Then he gets them all back, lines them up in the dorm, and he said, okay, somebody needs to confess, we're not going to do that again, that was wrong. Ed don't have a clue, but there's always one or two that'll say, I'm sorry, Brother Ed, I won't do that again. We're just like that nine-year-old boy camp, aren't we? We mess up. If God confronts us, we have to understand that usually we've done something wrong. Oh, y'all are the saints today, right? Now, what he says, the cost, though, of unforgiveness. First of all, it pulls us away from God. In chapter 15, he said, I am the vine, you are the branches. I am the vine, you are the branches. Unless the branch is connected to the vine, there's no power. There's no fruit. He said, if you're connected to the vine, there's fruit. It goes on to say in that passage in John chapter 15, that if you're connected more, there's more fruit. Then it says the third time, if you're connected to the vine, Jesus Christ, there is much fruit. Don't you like much better than more and more better than some? But he's saying we must be connected. Well, if we sin daily, it creates this cloud, this this barrier between us and the Father. That we have to confess our sins so that when we pray, it doesn't go just to the ceiling. It enters through Jesus into the throne room. But if we sin, then we break the fellowship and there's no connection. How many of you love and hate cell phones all at the same time? Get calls all the time and finally somebody will scream, Can you not hear me? No. <laughs> I hear, yip, oop, yip, oop, yip, oop. <laughs> Y'all hear those? The connection is poor, isn't it? My phone, I don't have to worry about it. It won't ring in this building and I can see a Verizon tower from the parking lot. <laughs> there is no connection. <laughs> Well, that's what happens when we sin. The Lord cannot hear us. And we're disconnected. The branch is not producing from the Father through Jesus Christ. And so there is no fruit. There's not more fruit. There's not much fruit. There's no fruit. And so we have to be connected and that's what happens. We are not saved daily, but we're walking daily with the Lord. Now, in this passage in this part about being the cost of unforgiveness there's three things to think about first of all if we've never been saved because we have a name on a roll doesn't mean we've been saved many of you have experienced as you went through and realized maybe I never made that connection maybe I never gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ and so in that we need to make sure that you know that you know that you know Jesus Christ that he's in your heart Because I'm telling you, folks, you'll know it, but it's coming. It's coming to this county. It's coming to this area, the persecution of the church. You see it unfold daily. Very seldom I open up and look at something mainline, and I think, golly, that is crazy. But it's the norm now, the craziness. We need to know that we know that we know when the Lord takes us all out. Then there's a second thing. It... it, messes up our walking daily with Christ. When we have unforgiven sin, just the daily walk with the Lord. You know, you're encouraged every morning to to pray and have your devotional and, and get started with the day with the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's okay to pray and drink a little coffee and pray a little more. But to have that daily walking with the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know what part of the day 
that God's going to need you to do something. I don't know what part of your day that God's going to send you somebody that needs a kind word, needs a touch from the Lord, that somebody would come by you and they need a little Jesus. And if you're connected and you're walking daily, you can give them a little Jesus that you can share with them and they see you're genuine, genuine, and that you would work with them. And, and we don't want to miss that opportunity. One of my favorite people in the Bible is when Jesus had his disciples go into the city and it was before the Last Supper in the upper room and he said, go into the city and there'll be a guy coming to the center fountain with a jug on his shoulder and he'll dip the water. Now his name's not in there and he's a water bearer, but he's listed. But he was doing his duty for the master and he showed up like he was supposed to. If you're connected and walking daily with the Lord, you're ready when God says, come on in. We bring you in. It's kind of like in a pitcher when the hogs have played and I got beat last night, but every once in a while they'll point over the bullpen and bring in another guy. Well, he's over there ready. He's not up in the stands having a hot dog. He's not disconnected from the team. He's sitting over there saying, I'm ready. I'm ready. Whenever you point at me, I'm ready. That's what walking daily with Jesus should be like. Father, what about today? I'm connected with you. But you have to forgive people. And you have to ask for forgiveness. Then, we don't forgive. That somewhere along the line, we just haven't forgiven people for something. When we have that unforgiveness in us, God says, remember, I cannot forgive you of your trespasses. Where you step wrong, and you do. And we have. We can't hear from God. We ha- we're not listening because we're away from Him. We're disconnected. We're just hearing a little bit. We're not feeling Him. The power of the Holy Spirit has been quenched. I love the, the pastor one time. He was an old fellow and he said, Lord, refill me. Forgive me. Refill me from the whole, with the Holy Spirit because I leak. Y'all leak the Holy Spirit sometimes. We drive him out and do not let him do his business. And then we don't see God. Well, unforgiveness is letting somebody live rent free in your head and they may not even know it. Do you know that? You're just letting them live rent free there in your mind. And they just, it takes up your time. Your energy, it pulls you away. Well, the context is, he said, this is the way you pray. Forgive your debts as you forgive your debtors. Wow, that's powerful. Powerful. The song that we sang, Amazing Grace. I wasn't any prize when the Lord died on the cross for me. Just a kid. I'd risen to the, I was the head shoeshine boy. In a barber shop. I was the only one. But he died for me. Did he get anything with y'all? But just a soul that needed saving. Forgive. And you know, when I visit with people a lot, they get the forgiveness of others down fairly well. But you know what they have trouble with? Forgiving their self. That hinders your relationship with God. At some point in time, you have to say, you know, this is dead and gone. This, this, in, this situation, it's, it's over with. And I need to forgive myself. I don't need to carry it around anymore, the guilt that I know and I feel. And, and I feel that other people look at me or whatever. I just need to forgive myself. Because God has forgiven me. And He says, forgiveness is not just for everybody, but it's also for us. Lord, just forgive me. I was stupid. Forgive me. I was wrong. Forgive me, Lord. Take this burden from me. Just forgive me and let me forgive myself and let me be in your service. God doesn't pick perfect people. God just picks people that are willing. God picks people that are humble. God picks people that just want to serve. Brother Bob's been in Ephesians now for a good while. You know, Ephesians, and if you want to turn over, if you will, to chapter 4, Ephesians is just the handbook for the church. Now, 
we've looked about the context. It was after the Lord's Prayer, after the Sermon on the Mount. He said, I'm going to double down on this. You need to get this. You need to forgive, and I will forgive you on that same measure. But then the, the meaning, it's just what it said. We can't bend or twist it and say, oh, God, he'll love me and forgive me even if I don't forgive others. No, that's not what it says. We're not going to bend the Scripture to fit us. We're going to look at the Scripture that God gave us. That's why we're a church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The cost of unforgiveness is horrible because it pulls us away from our daily walk and what we're to do with the Lord. We have to forgive and forgive and forgive because God forgives us daily for our sins. In Ephesians, the handbook for the church, on May 7th, I've got wrote down here, Brother Bob took these verses in 25 through 30, but I want us to look at 32. It talked about coming up to that, that we put away lying and anger and stealing and corrupt communication and, and all those things. But look in verse 32, chapter 4 of Ephesians. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. This is to the church. This is not to the lost world out there. They don't know anything about that great forgiveness that we've experienced. This is for us that we learn to forgive one another. Well, we're all family. Well, I'm sure glad family doesn't have any issues, you know. <laughs> But we are family, but we have to forgive one another. We, we can find things with each other. Be ye kind one to another. Be ye kind one to another. That's not always easy. Well, now, you know Brother Benny, but you don't understand. What don't I understand how I may ask? You don't understand what that neighbor did to me. Hmm? No, no, I don't. You don't understand what happened in my life. No, no. I'm a little confused about what happens in mine now at my age. But Brother Benny, you don't understand. I know, I know. But God's Word says, God's Word says, and He made you, He made that other person, and so He understands. And He didn't put one in there that said, yeah, if you get around to it, if you think it's okay, if they come around to your side. He said, and be you kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. The way we get to heaven is forgiveness. From the foundation of the earth, God saw us in sin and he said, I'm sending my son that he would die on the cross. And that from that, you could be saved from the power, the guilt, the penalty of sin. That's universal. Whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now that we're in the family, he said, you are to be kind one to another. You're to be kind and forgiving. Well, examples in the Bible. You remember Stephen in chapter 9? They came to Stephen to stone him. Paul held his cloak. Well, actually, he was Saul then. And as they were stoning him, I'm not talking about throwing SB2 at him. I'm talking about chunking rocks. We had an FFA camp out when I was in the ninth grade. I got to join Future Farmers of America. We all went up to Mill Creek and we're all up there around and we're standing around the fire and it's about one o'clock in the morning. Were you there, Danny? Danny wasn't there. And we looked down. We got to smelling something. Not that we smell very good. There was a skunk walked up in the crowd. We chunked rocks at him. He not only smelled, he was rabid. Now, a skunk walks up to the fire with you, and we're all about, you know, 15, 14, you know, so we chunked rocks at him. Paul had rocks chunked at him. 
tore his flesh. And you know what Paul said? He was, was dying and looking to heaven. Lay not this charge to them. Mm. James, you throw and hit me with a rock. That may not be what I'm thinking. <laughs> what did Stephen do? Full of the Holy Spirit. God had let him look into heaven. Lay not this charge to them. Wow. Is that an example for us? Accountable. Seven sayings from the cross. Jesus there. One of the sayings was, Lord, forgive them. They know not what they do. They have beaten him. They've nailed him to a tree. They have drugged him up there. They've beaten him to where you could hardly recognize that he was a human. They have driven nails in his hands and his feet. They're puncturing his side where the blood and the tears came out. And he said, forgive them, Father. How can we not say, I forgive you. I forgive you. I don't care where you deserve forgiveness or not. I just forgive you. Because I did not deserve forgiveness. And yet what did he do? He forgave me. And said your sins are wiped away. Pastor, I'm a really good forgiver, but I'm not a good forgetter. <laughs> if you confess your sins to the Father and you get up and you turn around and you say, man, I, I really am sorry about that. And he'd say, what? There's nothing at your charge. Your account has been filled with my grace. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Again, Jimmy, Wednesday night did a service that was really good about maturity. I'm going to finish with that maturity level. It's not what you say that shows your maturity. It's how you forgive. You can say a lot of stuff, but if you don't forgive, you're not mature. You're not connected and you're not doing what the Father told you to do. Twice in that passage, I'll forgive you. I'll forgive your debts as you forgive others. It's not what you sing, it's what you say. Not what you say, it's what you forgive. It's not your service, it's your forgiveness. It's not your sacrifice, it's your forgiveness. I think it's one of the ultimate that you list, that Jimmy listed with us, that simply we forgive others as the Father has forgiven me and forgiven you. I want him to measure me with that same grace I want him to measure me with the grace that I will forgive. And it's hard. We struggle. We don't always. But we must to carry out the message and, and the mandate that we've been given here at Mountaintop Church. While your pastor's been uh, resting and getting over the surgery and he's going to be okay, he just needs to rest a little. Jimmy and, and Delane and I... Text. Well, I'm thinking we could do this this time. I'm thinking we could do this. God's using him sitting there with his mind wondering and worrying about you and saying, would God want us to do this? I love that we have this shepherd that shepherds us day and night and he wakes up in the night and we'll get a text at five or six in the morning. Well, I was thinking about we could do this. Yeah, I'll get back to you in a minute when I get coffee. <laughs> Sounds good. So we've got this great task. We are set. When he first came to town, he said, your church up here that, that I'm coming to is set to reach this whole area for Jesus. I want to be a part of that. I'm to the age that I'm, I'm listing for Jesus to say, well done, thy faithful servant. You've been faithful over some little stuff. Come on in now to the joy of the Lord. That I hear that. And that comes with forgiveness. That God forgave us, we forgive each other.
And you may be struggling today not with forgiveness of others but yourself. Why don't you forgive yourself? Because God did. God did. Don't make him a liar. Forgive yourself. Forgive others. We're going to ask Brother Brett to come this morning with his group. And then we're going to stand and we're going to fellowship in the prayer and the time and the fellowship of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray this morning. Would you stand with us? For those that have lost loved ones. We pray, Father, for those that need your filling and your touch. We pray, Father, for those today as we go to the Lord that simply we just need forgiveness and we need to forgive. If you've never experienced that first face-to-face with the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to come today. I don't have any idea what your future holds, but I know that if you'll surrender to Him, He holds you. Dear Heavenly Father, as we bow and go before you in our hearts, we humbly ask, Father, that you've forgiven us. Father, I've experienced that salvation, but Father, I need forgiveness daily. I need forgiveness where I've misstepped, where I've stepped where I don't need to be, that I'm away from you. And Father, that cloud, that that fellowship that's broken, Father, forgive me of my daily trespasses. And I know you'll forgive me. And maybe, Father, there's just some need to come and say, Lord, I just need to forgive me. I need to forgive each other. But, Father, we'll walk out of here and we'll be kind one to another, forgiving and loving, so that we can make an impact in a lost and dying world. And that's the difference up here, is that we love one another. We love Jesus the one that redeemed us and bought us. So this morning, Father, let us settle it all today. Let us be reconnected. Make sure that we're connected to the vine. And Father, that our branches bring forth fruit. Fruit being other people knowing Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.